Since many materials such as salts, metals, minerals, semiconductors, as well as organic, inorganic and biological molecules form, form crystals, uh, X-ray crystallography is very important. So to begin with, uh, there are actually different types of electromagnetic waves in this, in this uh, slide. So we have on one end of the spectrum, we have radio, radio waves, which has the wavelength of about 10 to the power 3000 meter, which is huge. And on the other hand, we have gamma ray, which has the, which has a very, very small uh, wavelength of 10 to the power minus 12 meter. So in between uh, radio waves and gamma ray, we have microwave, infrared, we have visible, we have ultraviolet and sandwiched between these two or somewhere here is X-ray and the X-ray has the wavelength in the order of 10 to the power minus 10. Since energy is inversely proportional to the wavelength, is smaller the wavelength, higher is the energy. So X-ray, uh, X-ray, gamma ray and ultraviolet uh, radiations, they have um, higher energy compared to visible IR and microwave. Radio waves have the wavelength is very large, therefore the energy is, energy is very small. And consequently, that is the reason why for communication, uh, telecommunication, radio communication, we use the radio wave because it is considered less dangerous compared to X-rays and gamma rays. Uh, in 1895, uh, Ronkin uh, discovered X-rays and uh, immediately, um, I think in 1912, Lawe suggested that they might be diffracted when passed through a crystal because by then uh, it was realized that the the order of the wavelength is comparable to the separation of lattice plane and this was confirmed by uh, frederick and uh, nipping i have these two pictures um, this is a simple diffraction of sound wave in water when we drop two stones in a in a steel water we get this kind of patterns and um, we can we can identify this as a and b so A has the, the hills and this has valleys. This is due to constructive interference and B is due to destructive interference. Here the intensity is amplified, here it's dampened. Similarly, Thomas Young demonstrated that similar effects is observed with the light wave. So if you pass the light waves through the two slits, you will have diffraction patterns C, D, E and F. And why X-ray? Now X-ray has the wavelength of 1 to 100 Armstrong and interplanet distance in crystals is also in the same order 1 to 100 Armstrong. X-ray is also an electromagnetic wave. It, it should also produce diffraction patterns just like the electron wave or sound wave or light wave. Uh, the electron, electron is passed through a double slit and we get the diffraction pattern in this screen. Now with the same concept X-ray wave can also be passed through the crystals which has the interplanet distance in um, in the order of the wavelength of the X-ray and we can expect to um, obtain the, the diffraction patterns which is indicative of the internal structure of the crystal just as uh, the pattern on the screen here depends on the types of the slates, the distance between the slates, the number of slates, it affects everything affect the diffraction pattern. Here, Here similarly the type of crystal structure, type of plane should affect the diffraction pattern on this screen in a predictable way. This is a simple scheme to show the generation of X-ray because all key lines arise from a loss of electron. Uh, electrons knock off this electron uh, this electron from the key line and it's, it's ejected now to fill this vacancy uh, electron from L or higher shells can jump in and in the process they release the x-ray so if it jumps from L say a shell to K cell it's called K alpha K alpha and similarly if it jumps from M cell to K cell it could be beta uh, because all K lines arise from a loss of electrons in uh, K, K state, K alpha and K beta lines always appear at the same time. So always appear at the same time. If you plot the spectrum wavelength and the intensity, we get something like this. The genera generated radiation is actually continuous with the range of wavelengths and, and this is called 
Brahm Strahlung and along with the few high intensity sharp peaks uh, which uh, which is due to the K alpha and K beta transitions. The energy for the split into multiple energy levels causing even K, K alpha and K beta to further split at high resolution. So uh, if you if you um, if you have use if you have the high resolution, you you should be able to find that the K alpha K alpha has uh, actually uh, components K alpha one and K alpha two depending on the sub energy levels of the uh, of the electron here in the higher shells. So K alpha is actually twice as intense as K alpha two at high resolution. This is twice, but at low resolution actually. K alpha um, is considered weight average uh, average of K alpha one and K alpha two, and this is the formula we we use to calculate the average K alpha value at low resolution. This K alpha and K beta obviously it depends on the type of material, but for example, this red red ones are from copper. If the the uh, extra source is copper, we have the K alpha and K beta like this, and it has the K alpha peak at around 1.542 Armstrong for copper and for molybdenum it is uh, 0.07. In fact, uh, depending on the types of X-ray source, we have chromium, iron, co copper, molybdenum, we can have, um, we can have um, different uh, K alpha values. For chromium it's 2.2, for iron it's 1.9, for copper 1.54 and molybdenum 0.7 and also we can have different k alpha 1 values and k alpha 2 values for different um, x-ray source for extra crystallography we try to use the monochromatic x-ray monochromatic which is free from beta k beta and other continuous uh, wavelength uh, signals so we use the beta filter what is beta filter so in in the next slide we understand what is beta filter so beta filters are actually um, a substance having absorption edge between the k alpha and k beta beta lines of the incident photon beam so they have the absorption edge between the k alpha and k beta for example for copper we use the nickel if you use the nickel uh, they will reduce both the signals of k alpha and k beta uh, but good thing is that the the k alpha k beta signal is significantly reduced relative to the k alpha lines because because um, this is a this is uh, the signal is uh, quite uh, intensity of k beta is lower than k alpha so if you use the beta filter it affects the k beta more significantly compared to this one so we have the the filtration of the beta k beta component similarly to obtain the monochromatic x-ray we also use the mm, monochromator actually a single wavelength or radiation of narrow range of wavelength can be generated from a single crystal monochromator so all this k beta and this continuous parts are filtered and we only obtain the single wavelength or a radiation of narrow range of wavelength uh, we can obtain using a single crystal monochromators when we have this kind of single uh, monochromatic x-ray waves now when they interact with crystals again just like the the sound wave in water or the um, the electron wave in two slits we have uh, the there are conditions for interferences we have the constructive interference or the destructive interference so this uh, simple diagram um, actually demonstrates the the amplification of intensity when the waves are in phase so these two waves let's say a uh, wave one and wave two are in phase so the the Sign, uh, intensity is amplified similarly if we but if we have the waves out of phase they are in um, they are out of phase so the intensity is dampened and and we don't see the uh, see the uh, signals so this is the case of destructive interference in bragg's diffraction we we actually uh, we are looking for the constructive interference 
So let's imagine these two planes, inter, uh, interplanar distances d and one x-ray. Uh, suppose uh, it, it, it is coming here and it's getting reflected. The second one is hitting the second plane and again reflected. Now this is the angle theta. Now to observe the diffraction, we must have satisfied the condition for constructive interference. What does that mean? It means that this one and two, the difference is A or B because the, the wave, the X-ray two, number two, is traveling extra distance of A or B. If you, if you note this, A or B, this part. It is the extra distance traveled by uh, the second X-ray. So if the reflected waves are to be in, in phase, we must uh, have A, O and O, B. This extra distance traveled by 2 should be equal to uh, integer multiplied by the wavelength. This condition, this is the condition for constructive interference mm -hmm. in the Bragg's model. So, A, O, by using trigonometry, we can easily find out A, O. A, O is simply D length interplanar distance times sine theta and so we get this and this is called Bragg's uh, this is called Bragg's equation Bragg's equation okay some some people write apostrophe here some people write apostrophe here um, uh, it's up to them because uh, in fact there are two people involved um, both son and the, and the father and his father so we can write here or here or I don't know just leave it like this so this is the Bragg's equation and this is a simple but profound equation now we know the relationship between D spacing lattice parameter Miller indices now we know the condition constructive interference combining these two equations um, equation combining these two equations Bragg's equation and and uh, this equation which we derived in the beginning we get the interesting equation we get this equation in this equation very important to understand that this part is constant because for x-ray we, we keep the lambda fixed and we only change the theta so whatever is changing is changing here it's uh, this part is fixed this is constant this is constant theta is related to the type of planes and in extra crystallography we have the two-dimensional spectra where uh, in the x-axis we have the we plot two theta and in the y direction y-axis we plot the intensity and we obtain the pattern like this and each each signal, each reflection is actually, it belongs to a plane, a, a, a type of plane as represented by this equation. For powder XRD, we use fixed um, wavelength and variable theta. Let's try to um, do some indexing. When we, um, when we index, let's say um, we already know that this part is uh, very important. This part is very important. So the theta depends on, theta only depends on the type of plane. So let's find out what are the different types of planes we can, is possible. Now obviously 0, 0, 0 plane is not possible. So we, we start with the lowest one, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 plane. It is possible. And uh, for 1, 0, 0 plane, we have this equals to 1, 1, 1, 0 plane. You have two. You can try other things also. Uh, you can try to put, uh, try to obtain two. Other than this, it's it's fine. You can also get you will get this plane will also give you two. Um, but as I said, it's it's a family of uh, planes can give give you the, this value h square plus k square plus l square two. Similarly, you can have one 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 and the value is three. 
two zero zero you can have four one zero four two five in the ascending order we can we can find out what are the planes that give you one two three four uh, five and six uh, things like that and one one two will give you six and there is no seven remember there is no seven why because no combination of planes can give you the seven so no seven this is like uh, all right uh, 35 so seven seven is not there seven is missing seven is missing because no plane no combination plane try yourself you cannot obtain the seven <clears throat> so 202 will give you eight uh, 300 zero zero will give you 9 and also 221 will also give you 9 which means that they you cannot distinguish 300 zero zero and 221 plane in XRD because the theta is only dependent on the H, K and L so if this value is giving you the same 9, 9 then they will have the same uh, the reflection in the same position same two theta position so similarly we have 3 1 1 and 11 experimentally it is found that simple cubic systems have all these planes 1 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 2 0 0 but bcc some of the peaks are missing for example 1 0 0 you don't find in bcc and for fcc you don't find peaks um, corresponding to 1 0 0 and in fact we have a we have this general rule that simple cubic, cubic has all types of extra reflection. BCC has uh, reflections only when H plus K plus L is even number. And FCC has um, uh, XRD reflections when H, K and L are all even or all odd. So this is the condition. So, but we, we Bragg's equation cannot explain this. Explains the relationship between theta uh, the angle and the planes but it does not explain why some of the peaks are missing so to know that we need to further go to the structure factor intensity of uh, actually intensity intensity actually okay I'm, uh, let me draw it here intensity actually intensity of the x-ray peak okay intensity depends on the these two uh, square of the structure factor will give you the intensity so obviously it is very important uh, to understand why some peaks are missing in face center cubic and bcc structures uh, that can be explained by structure factor because the structure factor is related to the intensity if intensity is zero you cannot observe any peak so this relation is, is, is uh, in fact it's proportional proportional to to uh, the proportional proportional in fact this is proportional to proportional to i yeah and to understand the structure factor let's um, mm, let's understand uh, structure factor is given by this equation we'll understand each term okay so in this equation n is the number of atoms per unit cell we we already know how to calculate this f i is the small f is the scattering factor and x y z are atom coordinates h k l are miller indices so let's let's understand each of these terms so first we we understand how to calculate number of atoms per unit cell it is it is uh, very simple we have already done it for example if you want to calculate for simple cubic simple cubic has only one n equals to one only one atom per unit cell because there are eight corner atoms shared with between eight unit cells so you have one for fcc you have four, four in fact six faces of the cube you have six atoms shared between two unit cells so it is it is six divided by two is three and eight divided by eight is one so you have four units um, atoms per unit cell for bcc you have 
obviously two one is inside here other ones are shared between eight different uh, unit cells so bcc4 so we we know what is this uh, it is very important okay all right so we have found out uh, okay both this i and n because if it is two uh, it starts from one to two if it's three one to three so i think this part is identified now let's go to the second which is uh, if i so if i which is the scattering factor it depends on actually atom atomic number x-ray wavelength and theta it depends basically on the type of atom so depends on atomic number x-ray wavelength and theta so this uh, figure actually actually um, shows how it is dependent on the types of atom for, for example telluride selenite and sulfur has the sulfur has the lowest uh, scattering factor throughout the and uh, throughout the um, theta and wavelength range um, so it also depends on theta and also depends on wavelength okay so we we know what is this and we also understood the n if now we are going to understand other terms in the equation now we are going to understand this part which is the atom uh, lattice point coordinates or atom coordinates the lattice point coordinates are very easy to easy to identify for example here all the atoms for this is BC, uh, this is simple cubic okay this is simple cubic where is this uh, this is simple cubic for simple cubic we have all the atoms in the corner so if you if you and and we have only one atom so if you imagine one of them as origin uh, you can um, it represents the entire um, eight atoms so the coordinate uh, the lattice point coordinates is zero 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 so for BCC for BCC you have two atoms and one of them is in the corner so it's um, zero 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 and the one which is in the middle the lattice point coordinate is half because if you see from everywhere it's half it's half from here half from here half from g axis g uh, x y plane y z plane g x plane so all of them is half half similarly we can have lattice point coordinates for fcc and you can have again corner atom with the lattice point coordinates of zero 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 and other the three remaining three on the face is represented by one half half zero because half half zero half uh, zero half half or zero half half so all these uh, these are lattice point coordinates so we we know what is x y and g now all of us uh, i think this is we know already that h h and k and l are known to us it is it is they are miller indices so which means we now know the entire terms of the uh, all the terms uh, that is present in the structure factor equation so then we should be able to calculate the structure factor so let's calculate for single um, simple cubic single element so n is one good uh, lattice point coordinates are zero so if we use this equation of uh, structure factor we should be able to use zero 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 and n is one so we don't have summation only one atom so simply uh, for simple cubic intensity is proportional to uh, we already know that intensity is proportional to um, the structure factor um, to the power uh, square squared um, the uh, structure factor so all reflections appear therefore for simple cubic we don't have any selection rule it's simply um, structure factor is related to uh, to the um, to the scattering factor and we know scattering factor depends on uh, theta so therefore the intensity in the simple cubic is is expected to decrease with increase in theta 
Now we go to the <coughs> BCC structure. In BCC, we have two atoms. The lattice point coordinates are 0, 0, 0 and half of half. Again, we use this equation uh, for to calculate the structure factor. Since we have two atoms, one for the this atom, the other for this atom here. And uh, so we compute 0, 0, 0 and half 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 and we find out that uh, if we use the if you if you if you reduce this equation which is in terms of exponential if we re try to re reduce this in terms of uh, cos using the Euler um, formula then we get this equation this equation and this part is very important in this equation now look at this equation uh, we have H plus K plus L and we have the selection rule so if H plus K and L are odd if it's odd then this becomes 0 whole thing is 0 and then it is 0 it cancels out and we everything is 0 so you don't you don't have any intensity for H plus K plus L is odd so we observe peaks only if h plus k plus l is even so that explains why bcc some of the peaks are missing and only uh, those planes will have the reflection where when h plus k plus l is even similarly for fcc single element we have four atoms these are the lattice point coordinates 0 0 0 0 half 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 0 half 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 0 and again we use the structure factor to calculate the, uh, the structure factor and we again compute all these values here 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 and um, we have four atoms so four different um, parts of this and we'll again um, obtain this um, this equation in terms of cost again we use Euler, Euler formula for uh, for converting the exponential to cos and we get this equation and since again the intensity is proportional to the uh, square of um, the structure factor it is important that the structure factor is non-zero so it is only non-zero when h k l are all even or odd if if it is if they change the parity for example this is one this is zero is going to give you this becomes zero or if it is zero or this is one this is going to give you zero so we can only have the intensity if hkl are all even or odd and that's the selection rule for fcc and in fact this is the example of nickel fcc if we look at this all hkl planes are either all even or odd for example one 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 plane first plane is one 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 why because it is all odd one 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 200 next plane is 200 it is all even 200 next plane is 220 or even 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 odd 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 311 and 222 is even 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 so we cannot have in this um, FCC we cannot have this plane we cannot have this why this plane is not possible this plane is not possible because it has odd even even or this plane is also not possible because that will lead to the this plane is also not possible to two, 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 one for example this plane is also not possible all these planes are not possible why because if we have this then these uh, cos of this angle becomes zero or this becomes zero and and the structure factor is zero since the structure factor is related to intensity so the intensity is zero so we cannot have change in parity in any of the planes in fcc so and that explains the the selection uh, that explains the the patterns observed in fcc similarly we can so far uh, we discuss about the the single element 
cases like where we have only one type of elements we can also uh, extend the idea to mix salts like for example rock salt we can calculate n for four cations and four anions so we have in rock salt we have total number of uh, cation is four and total number of anion per unit cell is four so we can separately find out the um, lattice point coordinates for cations so cation is occupying the, and the typical fcc positions so we have zero 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 one zero half half zero half 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 zero and anions are occupied uh, uh, anions occupy the positions this 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 okay so if we compute all these things we should be able to get again end up uh, with this equation which is which looks similar to typical fcc structure because even in like in fcc here only if you are if hkl are all even or all odd then we op, op, uh, then we obtain the um, the signals because then the intensity is non-zero otherwise if there is change in parity we don't get the signals but in addition to this condition this condition there is in another interesting thing because there are two two ions involved so sometimes the intensity is higher for example for if hk plus l is 2n the intensity is higher right higher uh, for example I, I can i can give you one example of the plane uh, normally uh, sorry okay so example is uh, i can give you one example so one 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 plane one 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 plane this plane 111 plane it has 1 plus 1 plus 1 is how much is the 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3 right and which is which is which is here so if you have this plane and this plane 200 zero, zero, which is like 2 so 200 zero, zero plane falls in this category red okay i will i'll just so you have uh, this intensity is more than the intensity when it is on when h plus k plus, plus l is 2n plus 1 because intensity is proportional to 16 uh, the structure factor of c plus structure factor of a slightly higher uh, in this case so this is the additional um um, information that we obtain when we use the mixed salt now let's exam let's uh, go to the real example so as expected only the peaks that have hkl when hkl are all even or odd like 111 200 220 311 222 400 planes appear here for this is a um, xrd of lead sulfide which also has the rock salt structure and normally as the theta goes this side normally the, the intensity is uh, decreased but you see the 200 has a sharp it, it has a it has a um, its intensity is quite good quite uh, large right so that can be explained in terms of again uh, for 200 zero, zero, you have 2 plus 2 plus 0 is 2n when you have 2n the intensity is slightly more right compared to when you have 2n plus n let's do some exercise um, related to the uh, the indexing now so we have this uh, equations uh, which which on the on on left hand side of the equation we have wave uh, wavelength of the x radiation x radiation and the uh, lattice constant so this part is constant the whole the, the this uh, left hand side is constant which means that the ratio of this should also be constant so how do we how do we distinguish um, 
face center cubic from body center cubic and um, simple cubic uh, there's a simple exercise um, um, if we if we if we just uh, go to this equation if we divide the sine square theta 2 sine square theta 2 actually this part is constant so this is related to the h square plus k square plus l square so whatever is the value here it will ref it, to, it, it is proportional to the sine square theta so sine square theta 2 means the second peak uh, uh, for the fcc the second peak is not 100 or not 110 but it's the 111 this is the second peak uh, first peak and the second peak is 200 plane so if we divide the sine square theta 2 which is proportional to the h square plus k square this second peak this peak 4 if we divide 4 um, by sine square theta 1 which uh, which is the first peak 3 because this is proportional to sine square theta then we get this so if we in a in a in a x-ray pattern first we check uh, if if the the this ratio the sine square theta 2 divided by sine square theta 1 is around 4 by 3 uh, then then uh, we expect that the 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 crystal is fcc similarly we can have for bcc and 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 um, other systems for bcc for bcc um it's uh it's the first peak and by, divided by the seventh peak so first peak divided by the seventh peak for bcc so this is the seventh and this is the first peak for bcc the the ratio should come 14 divided by 2 is it it has to be it has to be 7 so if we get this ratio then we expect that the the crystal is bcc similarly for for simple cubic uh simple cubic mm, simple cubic we uh, we again divide the seventh peak by the first peak and for the bcc seventh peak uh, peak is here uh, sorry si simple cubic seventh peak is this so eight divided by one is it has to be it has to be eight so with this simple exercise we should be able to distinguish the from fcc from bcc and and simple cubic in exercise two we obtain information about the crystal from xrd reflection again we have this equation and this is so let's uh, let's see we have we obtain this okay we have this uh, figure from the from the X xrd pattern we we obtain the two theta value is this so first thing what we do is we we try to get sine square theta for all these things so from 2 theta to sine square theta it's easy we'll we'll obtain this one we'll obtain sorry as color is okay green and then we normalize how do you normalize we divide um, everything by 0 point uh, 0 point uh, <coughs> 0 point this this one we obtain this one so we get this now when we normalize we see that um, it is not gi giving us the um, perfect integer so we can we can multiply further so we multiply by 2 if we multiply by 2 we will not get the uh, integer um, whole number throughout so when we but when we multiply by 3 we obtain the whole numbers throughout the 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 reflections so if we multiply this by 3 you see that we get 4 roughly 8 11 12 16 19 20 now this could be uh, this tells us that maybe 3 is the is the value of h square plus k square plus l square why because you know that uh, sine square theta is related to only related to h square plus this one so if this is the whole number then that will affect the sine square theta all right so if this is whole number this is also um, 
this should also be affected now three then how do we get when you have h square plus k square plus l square is three automatically it should be uh, we um, i mean we we understand that this can come from the plane one 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 plane one 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 so one square one square one square is uh, three similarly this four can come from this plane and eight can come from this plane and 11 can come from three one one plane 12 can come from this so we get the it's probable hkl values and to check whether our calculations are right or wrong what we can do is we can simply um, divide sine square theta this row this row this row with the this row if you divide what we get is we get this and since we know that this sine square theta by h square plus k square plus l square is a constant you see that this is a constant we know this we know this it is a constant so therefore i think our calculations our assumptions were right so these planes are, are the real planes for representing this and from this equation uh, we obtained the sine square theta plus this one by using this equation okay because now we know what is the value of value of this one uh, it is equals to how much 0 0 0.47 so we know the value here and from here we can easily calculate 47777 seven. this is exactly because this is equals to this and we can obtain the from here we can obtain the a so a equals to a equals to 3.9 now we found the lattice constant we identify the planes and by looking at the planes we we, we already know that uh, the patterns if we if we check the pattern there is there are no change of parity you see that no change of parity and this is only possible if the structure is FCC because no change in parity no change in parity means if it is odd all are odd if it's even all are even all are even all are odd all are even all are even all are odd all are odd so no change in parity so it could be FCC we can further check by using this um, this equations uh, so sine square theta for the second peak is 0 0.19 and the first peak is 0 0.14 if we divide we get 0 1.335 which is equal to 4 divided by 3 as uh, as we know from the from the first exercise that 4 by 3 when we get it from uh, this equation is is it represents the FCC structure so then we are confirmed we are, we are sure that this is the FCC so from this we think that this is FCC structure and we also know the lattice parameter from lattice parameter we can calculate at, at no, for, number of atoms per unit cell because if it is FCC we know four atoms per unit cell and we know the volume of the unit cell so we can calculate the volume we can calculate the atomic density and from here we can also calculate the density and finally we all this information are um, used to obtain the uh, obtain the identify the crystal and this is uh, this is simply if you check all these parameters the unit cell parameter the density everything you will find that this is nothing but the nickel nickel so this is nickel now um, we we should also understand that the other than the structure factor the intensity of x x rd also depends on some other factors like like uh, multiplicity uh, like polarization factor uh, like temperature factor in fact higher temp higher the temperature 
lower the intensity and also absorption factor uh, which is which is governed by lambert beer's law and there are other factors also which affect the um, xrd intensity which we should be careful uh, and that uh, the preferred orientation of the planes also uh, affect the um, the xrd pattern now x uh, the line width of the xrd is uh, affected by um, uh, crystallite size and also inhomogeneous strain can actually broaden the um, powder xrd in um, in, in um, pattern all right so the broadening of pxrd peak is given by b observed and the b plus instrumental now b broadening this broadening b is due to as as i said the size effect size effect crystallized size effect and the strain in homogeneous strain now so size effect is uh, can be calculated using the device shearer equation where k into lambda divided by d and uh, theta d is the full uh, full width at half maximum of the width and we have b strain which is uh, which is given by the wilson equation and these are the strain uh, constant now if we combine these two we get this equation this equation and this equation can can be um, converted into this form as x axis sorry yeah this is x and and this part as y axis obviously we we are going to get uh, a straight line with the intercept and from the intercept we can find the size of the crystallite <clears throat> and also we can find from the slope the strain constant so this equation is really helpful in um, um, in calculating the determining the crystallite size as well as the strain